All right, first thing today, <laughs> I'm going to take this guy off. It just got to be too much. It's, uh, it's a cute idea, but as somebody on my face, on my YouTube uh, channel commented, why don't you add the uh, family too, uh, cat? Well, and I, I added, well, maybe I should add the cat too, the family cat, but basically what they were saying is there comes to a point where it gets to be too much. And I do have to agree with that. So we're back to where we were before. And after wasting a day thinking I had a good change to make here, I think uh, this is going to be better. All right, let's get busy today and see where we get on this project. Time to play with some clay. I'm going to take the hat off and uh, I want to shape it a little bit. I'm warming up my uh, clay, my clay that hardens or gets stiffer, and uh, I'm going to make the fringe for his leggings out of that. And uh, I'm just getting his uh, clothing ready for uh, a strap. That's going to be going across here to uh, hold his pouch, shot pouch, and his powder horn. Um, <coughs> I got to decide whether I want to put it on the back or on this side. I'm going to work on uh, his rifle tomorrow, probably. I've got to scale the, the rifle to the uh, clay, and uh, I'll do that uh, tomorrow. I got to fill in underneath the shirt. I can't have that deep recess. Yeah, I think uh, design uh, of this piece works a lot better as a single figure. I uh, think I got it carried away with my design ideas. key is to make it so you can pull the mold off without tearing the wax when you make pour a wax in your mold without destroying uh, the uh, piece. I'll show you what I was thinking of is having his hat on his back. I still might do that. I like that look. Now, this is the uh, length of rifle I'm going to have. I was going to have it in his hand, like that, or without the hat there, I can 
actually have it sitting across his lap, which actually would be better. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So, I'll decide that tomorrow. But, uh, I think that looks good. Yeah, I think I will put the hat back there. I'm going to put a screw right into the top of the hat to uh, anchor it to his back. He's leaning forward so the hat would shift on his back, I would think. And so I've tried to do that. I'm going to remove the uh, armature for the uh, rifle. And uh, that works nice. It just adds a little more to the story and to the design of the piece. Now I need to fill in underneath the uh, cap because I can't have a deep recess there. That'll also hold it nicely. I'll put a strap uh, going around his neck at some point, but not right now. Got too much to do on the uh, shirt to do that. The Greeks established uh, different shapes a sculpture should have. It should have S-curves, it should have triangles, and it should have circles. All created to, uh, you know, like this circle here, all created to bring your attention into the piece, not taking your attention away from it. I think this is super sculpty. I'm not certain if it is. I, it's been so long since I've gotten it, but I think that's what it is. It's, it's kind of a gray, blue type uh, material, but it's a clay. And once you warm it up, you can manipulate it. Um, I'm gonna use this for my fringe and uh, then I'll paint over it to uh, make it look more like uh, the uh, clay. All right, I've run this clay through the, uh, the Super Sculpty through my pasta machine to make it all the same thickness. And now I'm going to cut it up into sections. To uh, run through my spaghetti part of my pasta machine. So as you can see, it comes through the pasta machine, all cut the same width, and I can put this on to my 
clay and uh, it looks like fringe now I gotta fill in behind where I'm gonna do that because it can't be empty of space there so I'm just gonna give it some backing where my fringe is gonna be I'm going to work on his leg a little bit before I start adding a fringe to it. Uh, now the front of the leg, or where the knee is of the leather, would be stretched. Because as it gets wet with sweat and with... Uh, rain and water it uh, has a tendency to stretch and so it'll be kind of like a bubble of clay or of uh, leather right at the knee and uh, I better get this clay out of the way there we go um, I think I'm going to have to fill in behind here all the way down because that's where the fringe is going to go and I got to have the fringe backed up the clay I know it looks terrible right now but it'll all make sense I get done. Okay, now I gotta make the wrinkles in his leg. Again, the leggings will stretch because it's the nature of leather to uh, do just exactly that when uh, it's worn. I need to make me another sculpting stand, one that doesn't uh, have a revolving top because I do like to work a little closer to myself rather than far away into the center of the uh, sculpting stand. Now, I it, it didn't always act be that way. I mean, I, as age sets in, and I'm 76, uh, stretching over a long distance to work on a clay isn't the same as when I was in my 30s. <laughs> it gets harder is what I'm trying to say okay you just have to kind of imagine where the wrinkles would be and uh, you don't want to overdo it but uh, you don't want to underdo it either All right, I'm going to take uh, this tool. It's a silicone tip tool, which you can't buy anymore because the lady that used to make them doesn't make them anymore. You can make your own silicone tool if you want. Uh, if you do a search on YouTube, making your own silicone tool there's a few videos that uh, show you how i don't even tell you the, where to get the uh, silicone to do it with all right i'm gonna make a seam for the uh 
fringe to uh, line up with down the leg. There we go. All right, let's take the first batch. I'm going to take it in small sections. Since that one goes up underneath the uh, shirt, it won't be as long as the uh, ones outside the shirt. I think you can see why I put that backing on there. So as I've got a gap right there, it's still filled in back there with clay, which is the uh, objective that I had in mind for uh, putting a clay background in. I'm going to start down here at the bottom with the uh, fringe and work up because I want to layer the fringe. So it's not all flat. I want to give it character. All right. Now, if you notice, the edge is uneven. Now I'm going to even that out right now. All right, I'm put, adding this right along the edge and then flattening it. And that makes the uh, fringe look like it's been made to come out of the seam of the uh, clothing. For those of you who haven't been following me for too long, uh, wouldn't know that I use a paint that I had mixed up at a local paint shop, uh, actually True Value, and I had, took a sample of clay in to match the color and make a uh, flat indoor paint that uh, would look like the uh, clay when it dried. So what I do is I just paint this blue clay and make it look like uh, the clay. And that way it doesn't get confusing to somebody who's looking to purchase something of yours. It doesn't harm the sculpture at all. It just makes it less confusing to the eye. Okay, I'm going to go clean this brush off. It's a water-soluble paint, which makes it nice. And uh, that's as far as I'm going to get today. I'll come back the next time and uh, do the fringe on this leg. And get this leg all sculpted in. And his foot sculpted in as well. Alright, have a great night everybody and I'll see you uh, next time. I like this. I love this hat the way it is. Yeah. Good good move. All right, good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my 9 instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.